Praise the Lord, saints. Praise the Lord. God is good. And we love him because he did what, pal? Because he first loved us. Because he first loved us. Praise God for his awesomeness. Amen. Amen. He's an awesome God. How many of you guys out there know that God is an awesome God? He's an awesome God. Hallelujah. He He's a hallelujah God. Huh? He's an all-knowing God. Yes, he Amen. Amen. He's an all-presence God. Amen. He's an omnipotent God. Amen. He's an all-powerful God. Amen. Yes, he is. He's all potent and, and some, all that. We can't even begin to imagine. <laughs> we can't even begin to even imagine how great God is. You know that? He's awesome. Only thing we can do is open our mouth and give him praise and know that he's able to do more abundantly and exceedingly of that which what we ask of him. We know that he's an abler, enabler. We know that he preserves us. We know that he keeps us. We know that he causes us to grow. Amen. We know that he had made a way for us out of no way. Just like he made everything that we see out of what we do not see. That's just what kind of God he is. Amen. He's awesome God. Hallelujah. Glory to God in the name of Jesus. Welcome to the Tabernacle Trinity Hall, the show where I am your host, James and Pamela. Hello. Praise the Lord. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening and good night. Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory in the name of Jesus. For this is today that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. 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 Pam, how have your day been today? It's been a good day. How about yours? Amen. It's been a blessed day. Okay. Amen. Been a blessed day. Yeah, a beautiful day. Amen. Yes, it had been. Hey, guys, you're going to start off with the trivia question. Amen. The trivia question on here. Pam, she's going to read a trivia question for us. Amen. We didn't do one last week. So we're starting off with, with one this week. Name two biblical characters that took heed to bad counsel and paid severely. Amen. Read that again, Pam. Name two biblical characters that took heed to bad counsel and paid severely. Amen. Praise God. So that's our trivia question, guys, for this week, next week. Amen. Amen. So what are we talking about? We're still talking about becoming, you know, becoming like God, becoming of God. That every day we should be a little bit more like who, pal? Like Christ. And a little bit less like who? Like ourselves. Amen. God is awesome, God. We say that who? God, he even reveals us to us. Amen. Amen. That we don't know ourselves unless God is revealing ourselves to us. We wouldn't know that we were sinners born in sin if God didn't allow us to know. That's how much God loves us, Pam. Amen. 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 Because if we don't know what sin is, then we can't help be held accountable for sin. So that's why the Ten Commandments came, amen? So that man could know that he was a sinner, that he needed a savior, amen? Because without it, he was not held accountable to his sin. So that's how fair God is. God is a fair God, amen? He's a fair God. God is an awesome God. And he knew who would love him back, so therefore he predestined a way for us to get back to him. He didn't choose, but he chose to make a way for those that would choose to love him back. He didn't have to do that. So when we look at it from that perspective, God chose the kind of people that he would predestine a way back to him. Amen. So he loved us first. He loved the world, all of us, but he knew who would love him back, Pam. And because of that, he predestined a way back for him. He chose to choose those that would love him back. Amen. So that's how we are chosen. Amen. But God doesn't choose who would choose him. 
He chooses who choose to choose him. Amen. How long are you glow in the name of Jesus? So we are talking about becoming, talking about the difference between knowing God and knowing of God. I can tell somebody about my wife, so they're knowing of her. But I have a personal relationship with my wife, therefore I know her. Amen? Amen. I at one point knew of her, then I decide to learn and to know about her. And so when you're in Christ, <clears throat> knowing of and knowing becomes intertwined. Amen. But when you're not in Christ, you're just knowing of God. That's why we say taste and see what, pal? That the Lord is good. That the Lord is good so that you could be into a knowing of your own. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So that's what we're talking about, guys. We're talking about becoming. Amen. Pam, if you can read for us 1 John chapter 5, verses 14 and 15, please. Praise God. She want me to make something bigger, guys. Hold on for a minute. God is awesome, God. So let me see something. So okay. I'm going to put that there. And do that like that. How's that right there? Yes. Amen. And this is the confidence that we have in him. That if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. And if we know that he hears us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desire of him. Amen. And we read this last week before we end. We say this is the inner discipline of knowing God. And not just knowing of God brings you into a personally, a personal relationship with God. And that personal relationship is the confidence that we have in him. That we, if we ask anything according to his will, because we learn what God's will is. Amen. Amen. You got to learn what is God's will because he's not going to grant you the things that are not of his will. Okay. We say that we have a crown with talents. Amen. And that what our works will be tried by what, Pam? Fire. By fire. Amen. And that the natural things that we do in Christ are the things that will survive the fire. Not the unnatural things that we do. And we all do unnatural things in Christ. But we, we, we do do natural things in Christ too. Especially those who learn how to put on the full armor of God. Those who study to show themselves approved are uh, to equally divide the word of God. Needing not to be ashamed. Those that learn not to lean towards their own understanding, but in everything. To what? Lean on and understand, draw our understanding from who, pal? From God. Amen. Amen. That we got to look to God for all things. We got to learn how to look, giving supplication and giving thanks. Amen. That's what we have to learn how to do. That's how we gain the confidence in him. Amen. I want to read something because our natural in the natural and our natural in Christ. Two different things. Amen. And when we read um, 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 17, it tells us that we uh, become what? New creatures in Christ. Amen. Amen. Is what it tells us. And so that's what we are learning how to do to become new creatures. So I want to read something. I want to go back. And I want to read the book of Genesis chapter 24. And I'm going to go to um, verse 14. 24, 14. And it's talking about uh, Rebecca. And I'm going to read out of the King James. And I want to explain why. Because if I read it out of any other um, translation... I won't get all the ands that I need to bring out. It's 15 ands uh, from verse 16 to verse 20 in the King James Version speaking about Rebecca. Whereas in the other version, you'd be lucky if you just only get five. 
if you get five. And it makes a difference. That's why we have to be careful, you know, when we're reading the Word of God because we modern translators like to put things in to make sense to us. And so we have a, 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 a habit of combining and using other words to fill in words so that we can compress. And by us compressing, we feel that we're coming out with a better translation. But that's not always the case. So let's go ahead on the read. It started saying, and let it come to pass that the, that the damsel, damsel, I'm sorry, to know to whom I shall say, let down thy pitcher, I pray thee that I may drink, and she shall say, drink, and I will give thy camels drink also, let the same be she that thou hast appointed for thy servant Isaac, and thereby shall I know that thou hast showed kindness unto my master. This is Isaac, one of his servants that went out to find him a wife. Amen. He went out to find him a wife and he prayed to God of his master, Abraham. Okay. So Abraham sent a servant of Isaac out, also been a servant of Abraham, to find Isaac a wife. And the servant prayed as he sat in a particular place, amen, with his camels. And they was all kneeled down and he started talking. He had 10 camels, camels. And he was talking to God about helping him find the right wife. That's why I say he who, find, he who finds a wife finds a good thing. Amen. Amen. He who finds, because not all women wives are wife material. Amen. And it's great when you find a wife. And when I say that, I'm talking about a wife who is wife material. My wife is wife material. Amen. She's not the kind of woman that leaves me wondering where she are, what she's doing. And she takes care of me every opportunity she get. She takes care of me to the point to where sometimes I have to space myself so that I can get space because that's how much she loves me. Amen. So God is an awesome God. And so when we read about Rebecca, let's continue to read. And it came to pass, verse 15, before he had done speaking, that behold, Rebecca came out, who was born to um, Bethu, son of uh, Milcah, the wife of Nahor, Abraham's brother, with her picture upon her shoulder. Okay? And remember, this is what the, the um, servant is praying for. Now, it's upon her, her shoulder. She haven't, she haven't let down that picture yet. So now, here we go. And the damsel was very fair to look upon a virgin. Neither had any man known her. She was a virgin. And that's the second and. The first and was and the dam damsel was very fair to look upon. Okay. The second and and she went down to the well. The third and and filled her pitcher. The fourth and and came up. The fifth and and pal, keep counting because I lose count. And the servant ran to meet her. And the sixth and said, Let me, I pray thee, drink a little water of thy pitcher. The seventh and, and she said, Drink, my lord. The eighth and, and she hasted and hasted and let down her picture. Now we see what he's asking for is beginning to come to pass as far as identifying whom he's asking to be the wife of his servant Isaac upon her hand and the ninth and and gave him drink the tenth and 
And when she had done giving him drink, she said, I will draw water for thy camels also until they have done drinking. All of this was initiated because he asked for a single drink. And this is the kind of woman she was. Remember, we we're talking about things that will be burned by fire that we do in the natural versus the thing that are of Christ that will allow talents to be in our crown. You, you, you're becoming, you becoming who you are in Christ. How you study is, is represents of who you are. So we see how um, Rebecca is in the natural. We see how great she is as a woman being um, um, identified to be a wife, not yet being a wife. Amen. And so, and what am I on now, pal? Number 12, 13, 14, 15, number 11. The 11th and she hasted the 12th and empty her pitcher into the throw the 14th and ran she ran again unto the well to draw water the 15th and and drew for all his camels he had 10 camels a camel is known to drink at least 25 gallons of water after taking a trip across the desert and Rebecca, she gave water to every one of them. And I'll read another verse. And the man wondering at her held his peace to wit whether the Lord had made his journey prosperous or not. And it came to pass as the camels had done drinking that the man took a golden earring of health a shackle rate and two bracelets for her hands of ten shackles weight of gold and said whose daughter out art thou tell me I pray thee is there room in thy father's house for us to lounge in lounge in amen, amen. so there you go there you go you have natural tendencies and then you have the things that are of Christ and Rebecca made a excellent wife. She did all of these things. That's different. I can say my wife is a good wife. But if I say, and every morning she makes breakfast, and every morning she makes lunch, and every day she come home and cook dinner, and she cleans the house, and she washes the clothes, and she loves me, and she loves her children, and she take time out for devotion. That makes a big difference than just saying that my wife is a good wife, don't it? Amen. Because it paints a perfect picture of somebody. And that's why I like reading the um, King James Version. Now, we still got to, you know, sometimes have something to help us understand what we are reading, the living, the living Bible or something. But I just want to explain, you know, something, you know. And so, and if we look at John the Baptist, John the Baptist did a lot of things that his natural was spiritual. Natural. Because he was filled with the Holy Ghost and he made the rape. Amen. He was the icebreaker before Christ came. And he decreased it so that Christ could increase. Amen. Amen. So see, we're looking at natural things. So you got a lot of people say, well, I'm good and I'm this and I'm that. But, you know, we are not rewarded because of our works. Works with our faith is dead. You got to have faith. Rebecca had faith. You got to have faith. My wife, she held faith. I held faith. Amen. Amen. John the Baptist had faith. Amen. Praise God. But even in our faith, we got to learn what is the difference between our natural works and our works of faith. Amen. Amen. What are your works of faith? What is your belief? Not only that, but are you acting on that belief? What are your things that you're doing? The things that you didn't used to do versus the things that you do do. 
This require guys, praise God. God is an awesome God because he prepares us. This requires meaningful learning and not what is called uh, rote learning. You must learn to seek what with active learning by understanding how to put together the wholeness of God's word, which is what? Meaningful learning. As you read the word of God, things begin to come to you and you get those aha moments, Pam, where things begin to make sense to you. Now I understand this battle than I did when I first read it. Amen? Amen. You know, sometimes you can read something and you ask God about something and you don't get to ask until five years from now, ten years from now, but it comes back to your, your, your remembrance. Amen? Amen. And as you continue to study, the puzzle begin to fit together. You begin to understand things as a whole. You begin to see God in a whole way of seeing God. Amen. A battle way that you had saw him before. This does not happen by just memorizing scripture. This is what we call rote learning. R-O-T-E. Rote learning does not require understanding. Rote learning Easy to lose focus, doesn't allow for a deeper understanding of a subject, doesn't encourage the use of social skills. You got some people so heavenly bound that they know earthly good, you know, amen. Uh, no connection between new and previous knowledge. They're not growing. They're learning scriptures, but they're not applying it. May resort in wrong impressions or understanding a concept, they're misinterpreting. They 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 don't get things. Uh, they're not giving the comp getting the common sense, the aha uh -huh of spiritual things because they're not moving in the spirit. Remember, we said the more room, the more space you make in you for the Holy Spirit, the more room the Holy Spirit will make in you for Jesus. Amen. Amen. But we need what meaningful learning. That's how we build our relationship with Christ, guys. Encouraging understanding, not memorization. I know people who know scriptures, hundreds of scriptures, brag about it, but they always get in trouble. They end out of jail because they know scriptures, but they're not applying it. Not all of them is in and out of jail. I know people who are, are in Christ that get off on memorizing scripture, but they don't apply it. Amen. Encouraging active learning techniques. You know, how you study who you are, how you study becomes who you are, and who you are is because of how you study. You always heard Pam say that you got to have devotion. You got to Read the word of God. I'm going to tell that battle and I can tell it when it comes to devotion. Amen. Yeah, but you also have to bring the initiator who does it all in the picture. And that's the Holy Spirit. Amen. Because he is the one that Christ said will be guide us to all truth. And so you can't just read it just out of your own natural knowledge because you won't understand it. You have to get the power of the Holy Spirit to teach you because this is... God's word. Amen. And he spoke it through vessels like us. But in order to understand it, to apply it to our lives, because he created all of us for a reason. Amen. Everyone was created for a divine purpose. Amen. And you just have to get connected to that. Focusing on the outcome of the learning process, guys. We got to focus on the outcome of the learning process. The things I used to do, I don't do anymore. The things I didn't used to do, those I find myself doing. You begin to notice things of you being new as a new creature in Christ. Relating new information to prior knowledge. What God got me through yesterday builds my faith for what God is getting me through today. Amen. It's all about developing the characteristics of Christ. Amen. It's not about how much knowledge you know. It's not about how many scriptures you can preach us quote. It's not about the the studying, the studying. If you're studying, like Paul said, and you do all of this, and you don't have that love and the compassion that Christ has, 
then it's null and void. Amen. Amen. Turn to Second Corinthians, Pam. Read that again. Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. Being of the things of God, to have reach or to have accomplished already the things of God. The more you know, the more knowledge you have, the more you aggrieve. Amen. A lot of people look at God one-sidedly. God is not a one-sided God. The raises of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. Amen. There's a side of God that you don't want to meet. There's a side of God you don't want to know. You only want to know of. Amen. Because God is a awesome God. And he's the master and he loves his create his creation. But he teaches us, he settles us, he establishes us, he punishes us. Amen. God loves us. God even gets upset at us at times. But he continues to love us. To be upon the moment or to currently be in the moment of what we sought. This is how we are becoming to being of the things of God, experiencing the things of God, finding yourself doing the things that you don't do and not doing the things that you used to do. You are now knowing the things of God versus just knowing of God. At the things of God. You got to also, you got to know, learn how to know the things of God before you can start applying the things of God to know God for yourself. We call this experiencing God. Amen. Amen. We learned that when we was at Gethsemane. I met my wife at Gethsemane Baptist Church in um, Virginia. Amen. And we had a class. They had a two-year um Bible Institute College, and one of the classes was called Experiencing God. There's a book out here. It's a workbook called Experiencing God. Guys, look that book up. Go get it. Amen. You have learned, and you are learning how to ride the rave link of grace, being in the blessings of God and not the denying of God. There are certain things you just want to know of God. There's some things you don't want to know God as. Amen. And that's one of the things is being in the denying of God. The confidence we have in the Lord comes by being in Christ. And we have learned by what, Pam? Personal experience. Personal experience. You have tasted and seen the goodness of God and how God is. It is here that you have learned to strive in the newness of who you have become. Pell me that scripture for us, baby. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Amen. You Learn the things to ask that are of God, and you learn to desire mostly the things that are of God. We learn to say, God, you know what is best for us. We learn to say, God, your will and not my will be done. Amen. Amen. Be in Christ. She read it. Therefore, if any man be in Christ. Pam, can you read John 15, verses 7 through 11 for us, please? If ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. Wherein is my Father glorified? Herein, amen. Herein <laughs> is my Father glorified, that ye bear much fruit, so shall ye be my disciples. As the Father hath loved me, so have I. I loved you. Continue ye in my love. If ye keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. These things have I spoken unto you, that my joy might remain in you, and that your joy might be full. Amen. You are now walking of and in the influences of a new creature. This right here. You have learned to put off the old things that are now behind you. God is an awesome God. 
Opportunity given. Pam, read 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21 for us. For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Amen. Guys, all will have the opportunity to hear of the Lord as being the Savior of of the world we can come under the influence of the new creature because of him that became sin for us hallelujah who's that the son of god god the son god the father god the son god the holy spirit amen who knew no sin that's why he's worthy that's why he was worthy that's why he is worthy that's why his name is lifted above all names in a name on earth in heaven and below earth therefore we could become the righteousness of god we are made to be the light of the world we are the salt of the world join us next monday here on the tabernacle trinity hall show where our favorite lot of the B is, where we can say to you that you, you are, are so beautiful. beautiful. God bless you. God bless. We love you. We love you. Stay blessed. Praise God. Hallelujah. In the name.